But for now, we're going to talk about Catino Award and being a finalist. And um, you won last year. What what does it mean to just be a finalist again? It's such a hard award to be uh, considered for. And here you are again, a chance to win it two years in a row. Yeah, um, you know, with this with this sort of uh, Catino Award, I think for me, um, I take a little more pride in, in almost being the only American on the list this time. Um, which is which is a little different than last year. Last year was me, Alex Wolf, and Johnny, all national team members, and that was just sort of you know three pretty good friends. Um, but this year it's, it's just it's a little different, um, not having any any other Americans on the list. So that's just something I'm very very prideful of. Um, and then you know obviously we'll wait and see to see who wins, but just something I'm, I'm very excited to represent Stanford for and uh, and uh, uh, the national team as well. Did did you get to you know obviously you met Pacific this year so you're familiar with Luke have you played against Bucknell much in your career do you play against Rade at all I have never played against Bucknell and never played against Rade um, I I'm not sure I think I saw somewhere how many how many goals he put up in his career and it was some ridiculous number it, it's a lot that, yeah that was unbelievably <laughs> impressive but no I, I've never played against Rade um, or Bucknell but but I, I've heard uh, I've heard great things about him. So let's take you back to last year at the Olympic Club. And I know we talked after you won the Catino Award then. Um, you know you're a finalist, but when that happens, when they announce your name, what's that moment like when it, when it sinks in that you're actually the winner of, of what is Water Polo's Heisman Trophy? Well, what happened first was I, I almost dropped the award uh, right when it I happened. I saw that. I remember, yeah. I remember it being handed it to me, and I, I just – it was very top-heavy. I, I didn't think it was going to be very top-heavy. It almost fell out of my hand. But, um, you know, once you get on stage and you're just looking at all your best friends, your family – um, you're just very grateful for all the people who helped get you there. Um, you're not really thinking about what you did the previous season, but you're just sort of thinking about everyone who got you there. Uh, this year, coming off of a different result than last year, right? You went to the Catino Award, you win, but this year a little bit more special as you're coming off an NCAA championship, uh, one that was a long time coming for Stanford. It's been a couple of months. I imagine that's still a result that makes you smile and still one of the, one of the best moments of your water polo life. For sure. Um, and, you know, only being three months out, it's hard to have that kind of perspective on it as far as, you know, when I'm all said and done, what I will look back sure. on as the best moments of my career. But it's something that I, you know, every time I think about it, um, obviously, you know, brings a lot of joy. Um, and it, it, I mean, it was almost hard to let it sink in because right after right after we had NC20 finals, I actually had a final the next day. And then we sort of went through finals and I was with the national team almost immediately and, and back with the guys that I was just competing against. So it, it took some time for it to sink in, took a week off. Um, but you know, it's, it's something that whenever I do think about, whenever I go back and, and watch a video of it, it's, it's exciting. Folks have a lot of time on their hands these days. They can go back and watch these games in full on NCAA.com. That semifinal against USC, that'll, that'll go down as one of the all time greats. Uh, and, and you getting the winner there in, in, a uh, overtime, that was a wild game as I think back on it, where Stanford's in control, you know, you won. So we can talk about the fact that the team was was up right by a couple of goals, and then I got very oh, yeah. interesting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's tied. It goes to overtime. When that game is tied and you go to overtime, is it is it all out panic? How do you guys stay calm? Um, you know, throughout the course of the season, you know, with some wins, some losses, you can sort of, as a team, you can talk about how you react in certain certain situations and how you react when you're up for goals, how you react when you're down for goals. And one of those things is the one of the hardest things to do is is playing with a lead. It's it's very it's very difficult to not get. Um, you know, tight, not, you know, continuing to attack. Um, and, and that happened to us a little bit. Obviously, we were up by four, and they came back and tied it. But but there was no sense of panic throughout the team. We had a group of guys on our team who were unbelievably confident, and everyone in the pool, everyone on the deck. Um, and so we were able to sort of look each other in the eyes and say, this isn't this doesn't mean anything. Um, you know, we, we can still win this, and, and we ended up doing that. And then you win the actual title over, over Pacific in their pool. It had been a long time for Stanford. Uh, since, since they won a championship since then the three months since then have you heard from folks that used to play for the team what, what has it meant to the stanford water polo community to finally get back to number one yeah in the in the couple couple weeks or a month after the the championship game uh was you know got got texts and emails from all sorts of all sorts of alums some you know ex-olympians um, and others just saying how proud of they, how proud of them, how proud of us they were. Um, it was it was really cool to see all those guys. You know, some of them had won a championship in the past, and some of them, you know, I was teammates with. 
um, and just sort of to tell them, you know, this is not just this team championship, but it's the it's the program championship. And so that was that was a, a very cool experience for sure. So now looking, of course, towards towards the Olympics, and and we talked about you know that that being a few months down the road. For a lot of the folks watching here, their water polo seasons have been put on pause, or they were canceled, or they're or they're stuck in their house. We often ask people that come on uh, to give a good water polo tip, or you know maybe some skills or tactics. We're talking about dry land here today, obviously, right? People are stuck in their house. What are they going to do? Is is there anything that you think of when you're working out or getting loose, whether it's stretching or you know, I'm thinking of something that someone could do like in their bedroom, in their in their living room, in the garage. Is there anything or a couple of things that might be helpful to those that are trying to stay active, but they really can't go far from home? Um, I have a couple things. Things for sure. Um, and the first one isn't actually anything physical. It's everyone obviously has a, has a wealth of time on their hands right now. And one of the most important things as an athlete is being a student of the game. And right now I think everybody has enough time, you know, on their computers and there's, there's plenty of video out there of, Olympics, uh, college water polo, professional water polo overseas. And I would just encourage anybody who's, who's young, older, or even my age, you know, something I'll do is I'll probably sit down and watch, watch a bunch of the games from our national team games over the summer, from the Olympics, um, and just try to learn consistently. Um, it's something I did when I was younger. I used to watch, try to watch professional games all the time. Um, it's just stuff that you can just continually learn, you know, um, just sort of add different parts to your game that, that, that you never really thought of because other people have those abilities. Um, so I'd say that. And the second thing I would, I would say is for me personally, um, taking care of your shoulders for me, just a lot of, a lot of bands, a lot of shoulder strengthening, a lot of soft tissue, um, and, and try to move as much as you can. Excellent. So two, two good pieces of advice there. Um, be a student of the game. And we have more information on that at usawaterpolo.org. Also, as Ben alluded to on the USA Water Polo YouTube page, you can watch a ton of games going back uh, years and years of the national teams competing. Um, and, uh, and then also, of course, shoulders, right? So get your bands, right? That might not be for every person, um, but for Ben, it, it, it works out well. So uh, he's, he's got him. He's ready right there. Um, what, one more thing before we let you go, and we're, we're probably going to post this photo at some point soon, but we came across a picture of you. It's got to be 2008 in Thousand Oaks, and it's you posing with uh, Merrill Moses and Brandon Brooks with your sister, maybe your parents. Um, <clears throat> when you were there as a fan and as you think about, you know, what, God, 12, 12 years ago to now, what, what's that journey been like to, to being a guy that was there taking a photo to now you're on this team? Um, looking back on it, I mean, obviously it's been a dream come true when I, you know, when I took that moment, when I took that photo, I don't know how long I've been playing water polo for, maybe less than a year, maybe, maybe two, maybe a couple of years. I think that was before 2008, you said? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it was before 2008. I, yeah, I've been playing water polo for, for maybe a year, um, and obviously didn't have any of, of the, the goals that I, and the dreams that I had later in my career. Um, but it just, it just I've put some, some serious perspective on how quickly it's gone, first of all, just because I feel like... I was, I was watching the team win, you know, silver in two thousand eight. Just, just not twelve years ago. But uh, <laughs> so definitely put on perspective on how far I've come. Um, but also, you know, right now being in, being in my position, you do have a lot of younger players who you know you take pictures with and you talk to and just sort of giving them tips, giving them advice. Um, I think it's a, it sort of makes me look backwards, but also makes me look forward for you so wonderful. Good stuff, Ben. Uh, again, congrats on the Catino Award finalist. Uh, we'll hopefully see you in San Francisco in June, and uh, good luck with Team USA. Thank you, Greg.